Hi, I'm Mike Callahan and welcome to another lesson from the easel. Today I want to talk about this painting that I just finished. It's actually two paintings, but it's a diptych, meaning that these two paintings are meant uh, to kind of be one. So they, they, they go together. I've painted triptychs before. I've never really painted a diptych and I wanted to paint one where it wasn't just a continuation of one scene, but it was two related scenes. But today I want to talk, uh, this is probably going to take two videos because the first thing I want to talk about is kind of the story behind the painting. Every painting, whether it's a narrative painting or not, generally has a story behind how you decided to paint that or why. And this one likewise has an interesting story, I think. And I think if I explain this to you, hopefully it will help you in coming up with your own painting ideas. When sometimes you get really inspired, you look at other people's artwork and you think, man, I, I would love to have painted something like that. And so you begin to think, well, what, what can I paint? And obviously you don't want to copy somebody else. You want to come up with something original, but what is the process of inspiration behind it? So I want to talk about that. And then in the next uh, video, I'll be talking about how to paint something that's very complex, a very complex scene without being overwhelmed. That's, it's really easy to do. It's easy to get overwhelmed when you're looking at all these elements and all these layers in this painting, and it can be very overwhelming. So I want to talk about that in the next video, but in this one, Kind of the story, the backstory behind this is I got this frame from my mother-in-law selling her house and she had uh, this frame. <clears throat> Actually, this frame was made. My father-in-law and his friend built this frame for actually a couple of crappy paintings that I did before I even, well, one of the paintings I did before I married my wife and one after we were married shortly thereafter. They were both posthumous portraits of her grandparents. So her grandfather sat here and her grandmother sat there and they were very gracious about, about these paintings and, uh, and, and they hung them on the walls for years even though they were really crappy because I painted them a long time ago and um, I don't even have them to show you. So, and I wouldn't show you probably even if I did. So the paintings have gone away somewhere and now I came into this frame and I thought what a wonderful opportunity to paint a diptych what shall I paint so the first thing I started doing was looking through some references that I had and let me show you the background references that I came up with initially that made me sort of want to start to paint this so I, I had taken these pictures of the snow that had just fallen but uh, there were leaves and whatnot on the ground. Uh, so the leaves were still on the trees, but they were also on the ground. Um, there was some very subdued lighting here, and obviously the colors in these, there was no real harmony in these, but I wanted, I thought that they could be made into something that could go together. So I took them into Photoshop, I adjusted them there, and then created the seams from there. So I had the, the landscapes and I'm a, a landscape painter so it was like why don't I just go ahead and and paint those two landscapes and I just thought together in the, individually they might make nice paintings but together trying to show some sort of relationship I thought it needed something else. And so my first thought was wouldn't it be cool to have some type of a figure in the painting and I thought, you know, this looks like a scene where there's maybe a, a peasant woman or something where she's walking in the snow and going to be walking across maybe this uh, this log that's going across the, the creek there. And I thought, well, that would that would be cool. And so I tried to conceive that, and I, I came up with a with just a drawing out of my head that I kind of thought maybe I could work her into the, the photo somehow, something like this. Of course I needed, I, kn I knew I would need reference. And so uh, one day my daughter came in and I said, hey, I, I, need, I need you to, to model for me. And it was a cloudy day 
and the lighting outside was just exactly what I needed. And so I said, I need you to model for me. And she says, well, what, what, do, you, what do you need? And I said, well, how about if you pose in, in a, you know, something like this? And I showed her the drawing. I said, do you have anything like this that you could wear? And she said, you know, I have a, a, a long skirt like that. And, um, and she said, I could, I could wear, she had on that, that already had on the cowl neck thing because it was cold, right? So, and then she said, I could wear that, that cloak that I got mom in, uh, in, in Norway, I think is where she got that for her mother. And she said, I could, I could wear that. And I said, that would be perfect. And so just a short while after that, I was able to take her out into the snow and take these photographs here um, of her, take these photographs of her and use those for reference. And so I was able to get a lot of good photos. And the one thing I came to realize, I didn't want her walking away. That was, that was too disinteresting. That wasn't interesting enough. So I came up with, settled on this one pose and decided to put her in this, uh, this landscape here. And then the other landscape, I was unsure of what am I going to put in this? What can I put in this other landscape? And I got to thinking, and so it, it, kind of the narrative evolved in my mind. And so here's this woman standing out in the cold. Winter is approaching. It's not here in these scenes yet because there's snow, but yet it's still, the leaves haven't fallen off the aspen trees yet. And so I'm thinking it's the inevitability of winter. And I thought, well, well maybe I could put some kind of an animal in this scene. Well, uh, I thought of maybe a wolf or a lynx or some kind of wild creature, but I didn't want her to be standing there frightened of these animals. I wanted her it to be natural and serene as it was out there. So I thought maybe perhaps some kind of a bird, uh, a, a hawk or an owl or something like that. And I thought an owl would be perfect because there's a symbolism behind, in many cultures, behind the owl, that the owl is like, an announce a harbinger of death but not death in a literal sense but sometimes just death in a figurative sense so to me winter is is some sort of a, a figurative a representation of death in a way because things die they come back in the spring obviously and thankfully but so I thought this will be kind of kind of complete the narrative and complete the story and so I decided I'll put a uh, uh, not a wolf but an owl in that side of the painting and began to work on it. So that's how I came up with the whole idea for these two paintings. And, uh, and, and so I wanted to give you that backstory. And so tune into the next one and I'll show you how I went about painting these and making them, uh, you know, getting through them without being overwhelmed.